Alrighty, folks, let's head over to our mock draft. Yes, sir, we are a day away from the NFL draft, the actual draft first round. We've been on a 73-day countdown to the NFL draft, looking at an NFL prospect every single day. We just started to, we well, we just finished ranking our kind of offensive and defensive players by positioning these last two days. So we've been doing our due diligence to kind of see who's in the draft. We've ranked them, and now the only thing left to do before the draft actually happens is to predict what is going to happen first round in the draft. So, all 73 days have led to this moment, the mock draft. So, we're going to go just go through it, for, folks. First round, what is going to happen? What do we think is going to happen come draft night, come tomorrow? So, let's get it rocking. Let's get it rolling. We're probably not going to do any trades, unfortunately. I mean, it's hard to predict, predict trades. The The Patriots may trade up. The Falcons may trade back. That is a possibility. But I do not think we are really expecting too many trades here. So, let's start the draft. And here we go. Number one, first overall pick, Jacksonville Jaguars. And we know, we know, we know who they're choosing. This is the easiest one. Trevor Lawrence, we all know this is the number one pick here. Trevor Lawrence to um, Jacksonville. Let's see how he's going to work out. He's probably going to be very good, but we know Trevor Lawrence is going to go to the Jacksonville Jaguars. He's been the number one pick for the last three seasons, folks. Ever since he won that national championship game, everybody knew he was going to be the first pick once, once he was draft eligible and the year has finally come 2021 and Trevor Lawrence is going to the Jags. Alrighty, then we go to number two here. Now, 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 folks. Alrighty, here we go. Number two. Now, I think they are going to draft Zach Wilson. So, let's uh, let them draft Zach Wilson here. The Jets take Zach Wilson, quarterback from BYU, at number two. But I wouldn't put it out of the realm of possibilities that the Jets take Zach, or take Justin Fields at two because I truly think this entire thing that we've been talking about the last two weeks of either the 49ers choosing Mac Jones or the 49ers choosing um, Trey Lance, that's kind of what they're deciding on. I think that's total smoke screen, and I think the 49ers are actually j drafting Justin Fields here at number three, folks. I'm not buying into Mac Jones at all. At at zero. I, I buy him 0%, folks. I do not think he's going to work out that well in this league. Um, now, let's go back to the Jets here at number two. If what our kind of thinking is right, that the 49ers are taking Justin Fields, I wouldn't put it past Robert Sala in the Jets at number two to go out and take Justin Fields if the 49ers are big on Justin Fields because we know Robert Sala just came from the 49ers last season, first time head coaching, first head coaching job here with the Jets. And if he said, oh, Kyle Shanahan's pretty big on um, Justin Fields, that's pretty good, actually. So I'm going to actually go out and draft him before the 49ers have the option to draft him. So we're going to put Zach Wilson at number two for the Jets, but I wouldn't put it past Robert Sala sticking it to Kyle Shanahan and the 49ers by taking Justin Fields. But we've got Justin Fields going number three to the 49ers. I think it makes the most sense, folks. You cannot tell me that Mac Jones is good. He was thrown to you know wide receivers that were 15 yards wide open, folks, like literally every single play. We just tweeted out this video right here of when we were doing our uh, kind of breakdown on Mac Jones. I mean, look, look at these throws right here. Why, that's wide open, bro. What kind of defense is that? That's wide open. And th this one, this is 15 yards wide open. Folks, 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 where the hell is the defense? This is why Mac Jones has great yards and great stats because it's all wide open. We're talking about 10 yards wide open. That's not happening in the league. And uh, Mac Jones is not going to be able to see anything close to this in the freaking league, folks. It's not going to happen. So Justin Fields at number three. Alrighty, the Falcons at number four. Now that I think there's two options that they trade that they do here at number four, they either trade back in the draft or they go and get tight end Kyle Pitts from Florida. That's that, that's what we're gonna say that they go and get the tight end, really just shore up their offense for maybe one last ride as this new head coach comes in with Julio Jones, Calvin Ridley, Matt Ryan, and now Kyle Pitts. I mean, your offensive game should be almost unstoppable at that point with all those three weapons out there. So we think the Falcons take. Kyle Pitts at number four. 
Alrighty, now the Bengals up at number five. We know uh, they've kind of they are going to take a wide receiver. They've talked about you know there's lineman depth. We've seen quotes by the Bengals general manager um, that there is deep lineman draft depth in this year's draft, so they don't need to kind of go and get one at number five. And I think they kind of reunite Joe Burrow with Jamar Chase. So we've got Jamar Chase going number five to the Bengals, folks. A nice weapon for. Um, Joe Burrow to kind of work with. They are not taking alignment at number five, folks. That's not happening. They've kind of already said that. So they go and get that nice wide receiver weapon. Then the Dolphins at number six, folks. There's only one option here in my fandom. Me kind of cheering and rooting for the Dolphins all hinges on this pick, folks. If we do not go out and get Devontae Smith at number six, I am no longer a, a Dolphins fan. Go out and get the weapon for Tua. That was the only thing that we couldn't do last season. That was the only thing that we were missing last season was a nice weapon for Tua. This is the Heisman winner. I have Devontae Smith. I like him better than Jamar Chase anyway because we haven't seen Jamar Chase last season where Devontae Smith has gotten better every single season and he just won the Heisman last year so Dolphins take Devontae Smith at number six folks and I swear to God if we take Panay Sewell uh, at number six I am ripping down everything here the set will be totally different come Friday. So Dolphins take Devontae Smith at number six. Then we get the Lions at number seven, and I don't know what freaking Dan Campbell's going to do here. They need a wide receiver, an edge rusher, a linebacker, a corner, a safety. But I think they're going to go kind of offense here, have kind of Jared Goff, get a nice kind of weapon. They just lost Kenny Galladay. So unfortunate. Did they lose? They, hey, let's get that up real quickly. Get up this Lions depth chart very quickly. They still got, I think they lost Kenny Galladay, no? Yes, they don't got him anymore. So they've already got the running back. Let's show up their offense a little bit. You can get defense in this draft kind of later as well. So we're going to go that the Lions go in draft. Jalen Waddle, wide receiver from Alabama at number seven. Then we get Panthers at number eight. They don't need the quarterback. They just got Sam Darnold. They don't really need a wide receiver. They still got one good one. They did lose one. Let's get their depth chart up. All righty. Robbie Anderson, they still got. Uh, or, yeah, they brought in. No, yeah, Robbie Anderson, DJ Moore. Oh, no, they didn't even lose wide receivers, so they're good. They've still got all their weapons from last year, and both these wide receivers were A1, Tier 1. I mean, they both had 1,000 yards receiving DJ Moore and Robbie Anderson, so they don't really need anything offensively in this draft. They're getting Christian McCaffrey back, all good to go. So... They need a tight end or a cornerback. I say they go corner, shore up their defense. Matt Rule kind of shores up that defense a little bit. So we're going to take them drafting a cornerback. And our number one cornerback that we have on our board is Patrick Certain. So we're going to say that the Carolina Panthers go in draft Patrick Certain from Alabama, cornerback at number eight. Alrighty, then we get the Broncos at number nine, and we've heard that their kind of general manager, their head coach, wants to go and get quarterback depth to kind of challenge Drew Locke. They like Drew Locke. They say they like Drew Locke, but we just saw what they did last season, 4-9, and nine, so nothing great. Uh, so I do think they are going to get a quarterback here. The quarterbacks left are Trey Lance and Mac Jones. Um, and it's, um, it's going to be tough. Which one do they go after? I don't really – Trey Lance, I don't think it's going to be good, and I don't think Mac Jones is going to be good either. But I think the Denver Broncos are going to go and get Mac Jones, honestly. Um, Trey Lance playing in the FCS, more of a kind of a dual threat quarterback. Is that kind of the direction they want to move in? Possibly with kind of the nice speed of Jerry Judy on the edge and still having Phillip Lindsay in the backfield, you know, some nice read option. Um, so maybe they do take Trey Lance. Or do they fall in with the do they fall in love with the kind of great yardage wise seeing what kind of Mac Jones did with a good wide receiver core and they still got Jerry Judy? Maybe they are kind of imagining Jerry Judy being kind of ten yards wide open, like the film we just saw of, you know, uh, Mac Jones thrown to absolutely wide open wide receivers. So at number nine 
the Denver Broncos are going to pick. Mac Jones. I say the Denver Broncos go and get Mac Jones. I think they're going to kind of fall in love with those stats, folks. And I think it's going to be a little bit of a, a little bit of a bad decision. But we'll see what happens. Mac Jones getting taken at number nine by the Broncos. All righty, then the Cowboys. They need a tight end, edge rusher, cornerback, and safety. Well, the tight ends... Let's see. Let's see. I mean, we haven't really looked at tight ends that much because we just looked at uh, Kyle Pitts. We knew he was going to be absolutely A1 tier one. He was going to be the only great player in this year's draft. I don't really think tight ends are going to go that high in this draft besides Kyle Pitts because he's basically a freaking receiver out here. He's that good. So we're going to say that the Cowboys go and get probably, do they get a corner or an edge rusher? Can they get great edge rushers? I mean, there is still pretty good depth. Quitty pay potentially here. Jason Owe. Owe. Which one did we have in our... Uh, we got Aziz Ujulari. We got him kind of our first ranked. I know that's kind of not... Uh, yeah, here he is from Georgia. So we're going to say that the uh, the Cowboys go and get Aziz Ulajari, edge rusher from Georgia. He's our top-ranked edge rusher. They need an edge rusher. I don't think they kind of overreach for a tight end here. So we've got Aziz Ujulari from Georgia, edge rusher, going to the Cowboys. All righty, now the Giants on the clock. They need a tackle, a guard. They definitely need a lineman. They shored up their offense kind of in the offseason through free agency, shore up their line a little bit, protect Daniel Jones, protect um, uh, Saquon Barkley coming back from that injury. So we've got them taking Panay Sewell. Sewell? 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 Panay Sewell from Oregon Tackle at number 11 for the Giants. Alrighty, now the Eagles. Now we have said we have heard that there is open quarterback competition, but it's Jalen Hurts, and if they draft the quarterback, they're stupid. So uh, the the Eagles they don't don't need a quarterback. They could go and get a wide receiver to kind of help them out a little bit. Let's see what the Eagles are working with wide receivers wise. Did they lose one? I don't think they did. No, did they lose Alshon Jeffrey? They may have. Let's see what they got. All right, let's see what they got. Uh, still got Jalen Rager and now Greg Ward. So they probably could go and use a wide receiver here. Let's see if there's any good ones on the board still. We know um, kind of the top ones are Rashad Bateman is the next one up. Is that what we've got here on the board? What's our next one up? Uh, Jamar Chase, Devontae Smith, Jalen Rodder. Then we got Rashad Bateman, then Elijah Moore, um, kind of how we rank our wide receiver. So. Or do they go and get kind of a linebacker to shore up their defense a little bit? Go and get Michael Parsons. He's looking real good. Just unfortunately, he didn't play last year. So that's kind of the one knock on him. Do they go out and get him defensively? I think they do. I think they do. They draft linebacker Michael Parsons for the Eagles here. Shore up their defense a little bit more. Their offense is still decent. They got Rager. Maybe kind of get a wide receiver later in the draft or get one maybe through free agency. Maybe they trade for Julio Jones a little bit. That's still an option, but we have to wait till June for that to happen. So we're going to say that the Eagles go and get a nice linebacker and Michael Parsons at number 12. Alrighty, now the Chargers here on the clock. They definitely don't need any kind of offensive help. They're great. They've got everything. They've got, uh, let's get their depth chart up. We see that they do need alignment help here, according to, you know, this uh, PFF that we're using for our mock draft. They got Austin Eckler, Keenan Allen, Mike Williams, Jared Cook at the tight end position. So they're all fine offensively. Uh, maybe just shore up their line a little bit. So that's kind of where we're going to go in the draft. So we're going to go Rashawn Slater, tackle from Northwestern for the Chargers here. Protect Joe Bur or um, protect Justin Herbert. That's what they need. So they go and get a tackle. Then here we go, number 14, the Vikings on the clock here. They need defense, man. We just heard Mike Zimmer last season at the end of the season saying that this was one of the worst defenses they've ever seen. We see they need a safety here, and we are big on Trayvon Morig, folks. Is he our first ranked? He is our first ranked safety up here. So we're going to say that the Vikings go and get Trayvon Morig safety from TCU at number 14.
And here we go. The Patriots on the clock at number 15. They've got Cam Newton. They short up their wide receivers a little bit in free agency. No real great names. No A1 tier 1 wide receivers. But they do have decent you know, tier 2 slash tier 3 wide receivers on their team. Can Cam Newton elevate them? No. I mean, Nelson Aguilar, Kendrick Bourne, uh, Jacoby Myers, John New Smith at tight end. So really solid kind of tier 2 wide receivers. I don't think anybody's agreeing that any of these uh, players are uh, A1 tier 1 wide receivers, are they? Kendrick Moore, he did, yeah, 667 yards last season. Uh, nothing great. Nelson Aguilar maybe had 1,000 yards since he was the uh, 896, so he couldn't even be the main guy last year. So nothing great at the wide receiver position here. Do they go out and get Trey Lance here? Maybe have him back up behind Cam Newton? Um, so this is really interesting. We know the Patriots are kind of looking at quarterbacks here. So let's see. I think they kind of surprised a lot of people and they go and get Trey Lance since he's sitting there at 15. Alrighty. Now we get the Cardinals at number 16. They need a tight end and a cornerback. What do they got for their tight end? We know they were shoring up their kind of defense in the free agency period, picking up JJ Watt. What's their number two wide receiver? I'm blanking on him. Oh, A.J. Green. Oh, my goodness. A.J. Green, DeAndre Hopkins. They do kind of need a tight end. Max Williams, what did he do last season? 101 yards receiving. So they could go for a tight end here. I don't think they need to go out and kind of overreach for a tight end. I think they can kind of get one in the second round. Do they have a second round draft pick? They do, they do. So I don't think they're going to go tight end first round. I think they'll shore up their defense a little bit more. They just lost Patrick Peterson uh, since he's with the Vikings now. So we're going to say that they get the second best cornerback here, which would be, according to us, J.C. Horn. So we're going to draft J.C. Horn at number 16 for the Cardinals. All righty, Raiders here need some offensive line help out a little bit here. Protect Derek Carr a little bit. Protect their running back, Josh Jacobs, a little bit. So we will take the next best tackle up, which is Christian Derisaw for the Raiders at number 17. All right, now the Dolphins, their second first-round pick here. And I think, I think we are going to overreach for a running back here. And we're going to go and get... Najee Harris, folks. I have him ranked as the top running back in this year's draft. Him and Tra Travis Etienne are very, very neck and neck. I mean, they are leaps and bounds better than um, Javante Williams and Michael Carter from UNC. I don't even want to hear about them, folks. Najee Harris, he's 6'2". He's basically like a little bit of a mini or Derrick Henry that's able to catch the ball good. Travis Etienne is the speedster, folks. And I think the Dolphins go with Najee Harris here at number 18. We overreach for a running back alrighty then Washington on the clock a quarterback a wide receiver a tight end and a tackle a linebacker now let's go to their um, depth chart very quickly we know they've got um, their great playmaker in um, Terry McLaurin they bring in Curtis Samuel They've got uh, Logan Thomas at the tight end position. I don't think they'll go out and get a quarterback. There's no really good ones off the board. We just saw the top five, Mac Jones, Zach Wilson, Trevor Lawrence, you know, uh, the rest of them. They've already gotten drafted. So I don't think they're going to kind of overreach for a quarterback here. Maybe they do it later in the draft, around 5-6. But Washington here, let's see what they've got here. Anything great here remaining? They need a linebacker in Jeremiah owusu Koromoa, folks. We love that man. He was officially our first-ranked linebacker, and I think that's the way that this Washington team goes. Once again, shoring up their defense just a little bit more. That was the great thing about them last season. Um, Rashard Bateman, also a decent kind of pickup here. I don't think they go quarterback. They could go tight end, but I don't think you need to kind of do that in the first round. I think there's decent, there's, there's decent, tight end depth just because there's I mean there's Kyle Pitts and then there's everybody else if you're not getting Kyle Pitts I wouldn't even try and take a tight end in the first round so we're gonna go Jeremiah Owusu Koromoa defensive linebacker for Washington at number 19 
Alrighty, Bears are on the clock, man, and they're just absolutely trash. They need a wide receiver. I think they go out and get Rashad Bateman here at number 20. How about Andy Dalton at the quarterback position? Good luck, Andy. <laughs> Good luck. All right, here we go. Now the Colts just need a wide receiver, a tackle, and an edge rusher. All righty, any good wide receivers left? We get Elijah Moore. Where's he ranked on our board? See the Elijah Moore wide receiver. He is our fifth ranked of the ones that we've looked at. We've ranked him fifth and last. So do the Colts go and get him? We know they still got T.Y. Hilton. Their running game is absolutely fantastic. They are just kind of, you know, uh, who's their tight end? Who they still got? Let's look at that real quick. Their running game is fantastic, folks. They've got like three running backs. Michael Pittman Jr., yeah, they don't even really need a wide receiver, man. They got T.Y. Hill and Michael Pittman Jr. has been getting it done. Jack Doyle, he's still solid, though, man. 251 yards last season receiving. Once again, you don't really have to overreach for one right here. So they also still need a tackle. Maybe they just shore up their line just a little bit more. So we're going to give them uh, Elijah Vera Tucker. Here at number 21 for the Colts, shoring up their offensive line. That's really all they need, man. They've got the weapons at every single skill position. Alrighty, the Titans now at 22. They need a wide receiver. They just lost one. Definitely need to kind of help out um, Ryan Tannehill a little bit more in that passing game since they just, who do they lose? Um, let's look it up because uh, they had two good ones. All right, they still got A.J. Brown, so they lost Corey Davis. All right, so another kind of wide receiver to kind of help out Brian Tannehill a little bit more here. Their line's been good. They've got the line down. I mean, Derrick Henry's running fantastic. So they either take a cornerback or a wide receiver, and I think uh, Frank Vogel's been kind of, you know, we've been seeing that uh, they've been going after defense here, shoring up their defense. That's how they're going to win this year. They're kind of over, kind of depending on Ryan Tannehill too heavy. So I think they kind of shore up their defense a little bit with the cornerback since they need one. Uh, the next one up is Caleb Fairley. Is he still available? Caleb Fairley is still available. He's our next kind of highest ranked one. So we're going to take Caleb Fairley here at 22 for the Titans. Shore up their defense a little bit. Alrighty, the Jets are back on the clock. We just saw them choose a quarter quarterback. And now let's see what else they do here. They need the guard, the edge rusher, and the cornerback. Any linemen here? Still good to go. They can get the tackle from Stanford. Walker Little help out, protect their quarterback, protect their asset a little bit more. So let's see the Jets take tackle Walker Little. But they need a guard, though. They need a guard. He's a tackle. Mm -hmm -hmm. Any good guards up here? No real good guards up here. Do they even break it down by guard? Offensive tackle. Yeah, that's okay. All right, so they're going to go lineman. So we're going to go. Um, Yeah, Walker Little. We think the Jets go and shore up their line a little bit. All righty, then the Steelers, and I think they overreach as well. They go get Travis Etienne. They just need the running back, folks. They're good at the kind of offensive production. Their defense is still good. Just go and get that running game that did not work out last season. They just lost James Conner, who wasn't that great for the Steelers last year. So Steelers, they either get Najee Harris or Travis Etienne, who is ever is left. And we've got Travis Etienne here at number 24. Alrighty, the Jaguars again. We just had them draft the quarterback. Their line seems to be all solid. The tight end, they don't need to overreach. But I think they may also just shore up their line a little bit more here. So we're going to get uh, Tevon Jenkins, Tevin Jenkins from Oklahoma State here. Help out Trevor Lawrence a little bit here. Protect your assets. Jets and Jaguars both do the same thing. Alrighty, now the Browns here. Defense, didn't they just, they're, they're fine though. I think they just get the linebacker, yeah? Because they just got, they still got Miles Garrett. They just brought in Jadavion Clowney. Their line is, their defensive line is kind of short up a little bit. So we're going to see them take a linebacker here. They could also maybe take Quiddy Pay for an edge rusher. But like we said, they just got Jadavion Clowney. 
Um, so where is uh, where is our linebacker depth? Here we go. Zaven Collins, I believe, is the next one up since we already got Je Jeremiah Owusu. Uh, so where is Zaven Collins? Is he top? Where they got him ranked even? Nick Bolton. They do have Nick Bolton ahead of him. We don't have him that high. But I do love what we saw from Zaven Collins. So we say that the Browns go and get Zaven Collins, Collins linebacker from Tulsa at number 26. All righty, here we go, the Ravens. Now, they just brought in a wide receiver. Yeah, they just got uh, Sammy Watkins, no? So I don't know if they're going to go and get a wide receiver here early. They still got Marquise Brown, Sammy Watkins, Miles Boykin. What did he do last year? 266 yards with the Ravens. All righty. Nothing great. All righty. What else do they need here? Tackle, shore up their line a little bit more. We just saw them trade out, um, trade their kind of Orlando Brown to the Chiefs. So maybe they go out and get a tackle here, shore up their line a little bit more here first round. So we're going to say the next highest rated graded tackle here is Dylan uh, Radins. Radins. So we'll have the Ravens go tackle here. Alrighty, now the Saints now. They need a wide receiver, linebacker, corner. Let's see what they've got. Um, probably going to go defense here for the Saints. See what we got here for their depth chart. They still got Michael Thomas, and that's it now. They did lose their kind of number two option there at wide receiver. <clears throat> Alright, what are their defensive uh, looking like? Corners. Malcolm Jenkins at the safety. Marshawn Lattimore at their corner. Gardner, Gardner Johnson at their other corner. What do they need? Corner or linebacker? They need a linebacker. What their linebacker is looking like. Uh, Demario Davis, Andrew Dowell, and Zach Bond. All right. He could definitely use a little bit of a linebacker here. We've got the Saints going linebacker defensive depth here at number 28. And the linebacker that is next on our list is uh, who we got? Michael Parsons got in drafted. We took uh, Jabril Cox is still up, and Nick Bolton is still up. Maybe they go Nick Bolton. We're going to have them draft Nick Bolton, linebacker from Missouri at number 28 for the Saints. And then here we go, the last four of the first round, the Green Bay Packers at number 29. They need a wide receiver, a linebacker, a cornerback. Let's look up what they've got rocking at those positions. I don't know if they go and get a wide receiver here. Devontae Adams, Adam Lazard, Marquez Valid, Scatling, Robert Tanyan, tight end. So I think they focus on the defensive end. They got Jazir Alexander at the corner. Um, Kevin King at the other corner. Adrian Amos at the safety. And uh, Darnell Savage at the other safety. But they need a linebacker. What their linebacker is looking like. Um, what do we got? Uh, Ty Summers, Kyrus Byrne, and Zerdavius Smith. Zerdavius Smith is pretty good. There are a lot of cornerback depth up here, though. So we've got, we're going to have them getting. We do have Asante Samuel Jr. above Greg Newsome. But Asante Samuel is only kind of... 5'8", 5'10", 5'10". Uh, so we're going to have the Packers draft Greg Newsom from Northwestern cornerback. And then we get the Bills. They need an edge rusher and a corner. There's a lot of good edge rushers still up here. Defensive interior here. I think they get Christian Barmore. He's kind of fallen here. So the Bills kind of shore up their defensive line a little bit at number 30. Then the, uh, the Ravens with the kind of the Chiefs. First round pick of trading away their offensive tackle. They went and got one already. Now they might kind of shore up their edge rusher a little bit with uh, just Jason O. Do, do we have Jason O.A. above uh, Quiddy Pay? What do we got? Um, defensive ends, Carlos Bashman, and then we got Quiddy Pay. But uh, we'll have them take Quiddy Pay out here. Michigan, we didn't look at that many edge rushers. <clears throat> All right, and then we'll have the Bucks here. They possibly could go for a quarterback, but I think they shore up their defensive end a little bit, get the safety, and the next highest safety up here is Javon Holland, I think. Do we already – Javon Holland or Elijah Molden? And we got Elijah Molden right up here. So we'll have them take an Elijah Molden safety from Washington. 
Alrighty, so that is our first round mock draft, folks, how we think it's going to happen. So let's recap very quickly. We got Trevor Lawrence going number one to Jacksonville. Zach Wilson going number two to the Jets. Justin Fields, three to the 49ers. Kyle Pitts, number four to the Falcons. Jamar Chase, number five to the Bengals. Devontae Smith, number six to the Dolphins. Jalen Waddle, number seven to the Lions. Patrick Certain, number eight to the Panthers. Mac Jones, number nine to the Broncos. Aziz Ujulari, number 10 to the Cowboys, Panay Sewell, number 11 to the Giants, Michael Parsons, number 12 to the Eagles, Rashawn Slater, number 13 to the Chargers, Trayvon Morig, number 14 to the Vikings, Trey Lance, number 15 to the Patriots, J.C. Horn, number 16 to the Cardinals, Christian Derrissaw, number 17 to the Raiders, Najee Harris, number 18 to the Dolphins, Jeremiah owusu koromoa number 19 to the Washington football team. Rashard Bateman, number 20 to the, to the Bears. Um, Elijah Vera Tucker, number 21 to the Colts. Caleb Fairley, number 22 to the Titans. Walker Little, number 23 to the Jets. Travis Etienne, number 24 to the Steelers. Tra Tevin Jenkins, number 25 to the Jags. Zayvon Collins, number 26 to the Browns. Dylan Radens, number 27 to the Ravens. Nick Bolton, number 28 to the Saints. Greg Newsom, 29 to the Packers. Christian Barmore, number 30 to the Bills. Quiddy Pay, number 31 to the Ravens. And Elijah Molden, number 32 to the Bucks, folks. That's how we see the first round of the draft playing out. Alrighty, folks, that is going to do it for us today. We are live tomorrow, live noon Eastern, talking and doing our regular show, and then we're back live 7.30 Eastern for our live draft show. Let's see our teams get better. Let's see us call literally every single pick here right that we just broke down. This is what's going to happen in the draft, folks. We just predicted it. We know this is going to happen. We know it. Uh, so tomorrow, big day, folks. Big day. Gear up. We're going to gear up. So we're going to be back tomorrow, folks. Uh, but get a good night's rest. I know we are. So we'll be back tomorrow, folks. Thanks for tuning in. Thanks for watching. And we're back tomorrow twice, two times. Can't get enough.